Welcome travelers to Adventures in Security. My name's Tom Olzak and I'll be your guide. In this episode, I dig into the research I'm doing on vulnerability management. How do we manage weaknesses in our information resources in a way that minimize, minimizes cost or increases efficiency with optimum mitigation of risk, increase in effectiveness? How can we use the Common Vulnerability Scoring System to determine a vulnerability's criticality in our organization's unique operating environment? Let's explore this together. First, how we treat vulnerabilities is about the risks they present to the organization. This formula targets risks associated with human threats, on which I focus in this presentation. It goes far beyond the traditional risk formula. You'll see why this is necessary for vulnerability and risk management as we move through the slides. This is the traditional risk formula. It's a high-level model that demonstrates the relationship between the components of risk. Threats, exploit, weaknesses are vulnerabilities. These exploits, if successful, result in business impact. But this is far too simple when managing vulnerabilities to human attacks. Managing vulnerabilities is all about managing risk, but risk encompasses threat characteristics that we obtain via threat intelligence activities. We also have to know how and where to conduct vulnerability research. We then apply the threat intelligence and vulnerability research results to our network diagrams, asset inventories, and attack trees to determine associated risk. This means that simply plan running to patch any new vulnerability is not always the best use of your time or other resources. Let's take a moment to break down threats. Human threats have multiple characteristics we must assess. For example, what's the motivation? Human attackers are usually motivated by financial gain, political disagreements or attacks by other governments, terrorism, or working for some other social cause. Or maybe, they just don't like your organization or the industry it's in. Motivation determines the links to which an attacker will go to achieve a successful attack. For example, attackers looking for financial gain are not going to pursue a target with an attack cost that's higher than the value the attacker will gain. In other words, financial attackers want a return on their investment. The higher the potential return, the stronger the motivation. Political attackers, terrorists, and hacktivists don't usually care about the cost. They're not looking for a return on investment. These attackers are looking to make a statement, cause harm, or steal government secrets. If the motivation is strong enough, attackers with no personal financial goals will often do whatever it takes, regardless of time or other resources spent. Natural threats are also important for business continuity planning and incident management. I don't spend time on these because they're pretty simple. Fire, weather, and other natural events have no motive. We understand them and should prepare as appropriate based on where we locate our facilities. Continuing on with human threats, we look at means as another threat characteristic. The tools and techniques required by the attacker increase as the strength of our prevention, direction, and response controls increase. As we assess later, means needed to successfully exploit one or more vulnerabilities during an attack is a characteristic that directly affects the criticality of our vulnerabilities. Finally, let's look at opportunity. Opportunity is the level of ease with which an attacker can exploit a set of vulnerabilities to reach and compromise a target. The level of opportunity is determined by the vulnerabilities and the existing controls. Just because one or more vulnerabilities exist does not mean one or even the entire set is easily exploited. It's important to remember that one vulnerability exploit is often not enough to achieve a successful attack. Means, motive, and opportunity together result in a level of probability that an attack will happen and be successful. A human threat needs the necessary knowledge and tools to crack through your defenses. The attacker will possess some motive, a motive we need to understand to properly evaluate the links to which an attacker will go to be successful. Finally, 
the opportunities we provide to the attacker with vulnerabilities and insufficient controls are qualitatively measurable. This means we must have deep knowledge of our information resources, network configurations, vulnerabilities, and how controls overlap and provide defense in depth. Part or all of the information needed for probability is often contained in threat intelligence. Threat intelligence provides the threat description, including how the attack is accomplished, potential motive, although this is often not set across all attacks, and the vulnerabilities targeted. The CVSS, or Common Vulnerability Scoring System, takes all the information we just discussed and allows us to use an online calculator to derive a criticality score for a vulnerability in your operating environment. The first version of the CVSS was released in 2005. We're now in version 3, but this continues to be a work in progress. The NIST CVSS calculator we step through in the following slides uses threat intelligence, vulnerability characteristics, the effect on threats of your controls framework, and the assets involved to provide a qualitative score for your organization. This score, while not perfect, is a good indicator for planning where and when to apply security resources for risk management. I'll be using a vulnerability from the NVDB, or the National Vulnerability Database, CVE 2018-0492, located at the first link shown. The NIST CVSS calculator is available at the second link. You might want to load the calculator for our walkthrough. The third link provides detailed documentation and interactive training for how to use the CVSS calculator and its results. The image at the top is the first section of the online calculator. The base score metrics are set after research into the vulnerability. The metrics represent general criticality of the vulnerability. They don't change. However, the base score we're about to calculate is not necessarily your organization's score. So where do we find the values for these base metrics? When we look up a vulnerability in the NVDB, we find all the information researchers have discovered about the vulnerability. In addition, the NVDB provides what is known as the CVSS vector string that looks like this. This is helpful when feeding vulnerability information into a software tool. However, NIST also provides a table like the one shown here to more easily interpret vulnerability research results. Often, a vulnerability will not be fully researched with a base score in the NVDB for some time after it's discovered. In these cases, you have to use information available from other resources to assign your own values. These would be from your, uh, like your IPS vendors, the uh, vendors of the product that has the vulnerability, uh, input or blog entries from other researchers who have been researching the vulnerabilities and other resources. Using the vector string or the table provided, we click on the relevant buttons in the base score metrics box. This results in a base score of 7 for this vulnerability, which is high. Since we haven't entered any other values into the calculator yet, the base score is the current overall score. This changes as we step through the next two calculator boxes, temporal score and environmental score. Unlike the base score, the temporal score changes over time as threats emerge and ways to exploit the vulnerability change. Patches and workarounds can also reduce the overall score. The environmental score is set after you enter information about your organization into the calculator. This may or may not change depending on steps you take to mitigate risk after you identify the vulnerability. The bar graphs shown here are part of the calculator and are displayed as you work through the values. The overall score on the extreme right changes as we complete the calculator sections. Since we've only completed the base score, the overall bar only indicates the base score metric. These are the temporal score metrics. 
When we mark something as not defined, it has no effect on the overall score. As we move to the right, the metric value increases. In other words, an official fix will provide the lowest remediation level and lower the overall score, while undefined and unavailable provide the highest. In any case, the overall score will never rise above the base score when adjusting temporal metrics. I adjusted the temporal scores metrics to reflect that it's still confirmed by researchers that an exploit exists, that there is a workaround until a patch is provided by the vendor, and it's confirmed that the vulnerability exists and is exploitable in the affected information resource. These scores result in a temporal score of 6.2 and a reduction in the overall score to 6.2. Again, the environmental score metrics, the last section of the calculator, reflect the potential exploitation of this vulnerability in your operating environment. The previous two calculator sections only reflected the overall risk without taking into account your controls and your affected assets. Once again, leaving a variable or other, or other or score modifier is not defined results in no change to the score from the basic and temporal sections. These variables are the same exploitability metrics as those found in the base score metric section. For this presentation, I did not make any changes to these. We can also change the impact metrics associated with the base score. I changed the impact score modifiers to reflect low confidentiality and integrity requirements for the assets affected in my operating environment. However, the affected assets do have a medium availability requirement. Note that although the base score might have high impacts on confidentiality, integrity, or availability, the actual risk to your organization might be lower based on the classification of the data or systems involved. So what is the result of using this calculator? We find that although the CVSS base score is 7, our overall score falls to 4.9 after we complete the environmental metrics. This means that the general risk of the vulnerability might be high, but in our operating environment, it's medium. This may affect when and how you address this vulnerability based on policy, management's appetite for risk, and the existence of other vulnerabilities with higher risk. How you use a CVS calculator and other risk management processes and tools determines the effectiveness and efficiency of your vulnerability management program. Effectiveness measures how much risk we eliminate when, we, when dealing with a vulnerability. Eliminating vulnerabilities with a high CVSS score before those with lower scores is one way to ensure maximum effectiveness. The best way to reduce effectiveness is to simply attack all vulnerabilities with the same level of resources and effort, regardless of risk. This brings us to efficiency. Again, where do we spend our security resources when managing vulnerabilities? Efficient vulnerability management means that we apply our resources where they make the most sense from a risk management perspective. What we want to do is effectively and efficiently control probability of occurrence and potential impact by managing our controls and vulnerabilities with risk management. When doing so, we consider all variables in the environmental section of the CVS out calculator. This allows us to address both threats and associated vulnerabilities. Remember that vulnerability management as part of an overall risk management program takes into account general vulnerability characteristics as well as how your controls and assets are actually affected by one or more vulnerability exploits. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the icon. See you next time and be careful what you click.